All right. Do y'all ever have those days where you're just having a rough day and and nothing goes your way? Well, that's what happened to me yesterday. I I was just having a rough day. I'm just like, God, man, this is this sucks. I I watched, man, I watched Monday Night Football and my fantasy team got screwed over, and I was just like, you know, man, I'm having a rough day. And that, so I I had already filmed yesterday's video, the conference shapes you picks, and then I get a DM on Instagram from a guy that said, hey, your entire video was muted the whole time. He goes, he goes, yeah, your your entire video was uh was muted. Just just wanted to let you know. I was like, you're kidding. I literally lost and I was so mad yesterday. I was so mad when I found out that video was muted. Um, but take two. Uh, we're gonna film it again. Conference championship picks video is is here. Uh take two. I I, the board isn't as pretty. I had all the logos and stuff there. I'm not doing that again. I'm not. I, I, I'm just not. But here's take two of the conference championship picks. Let me get my face out here. You like my special effects? You like my special effects? They're great. All right. So here, I'm going to move my camera out of here. So these are the picks for... For conference for my conference championship. If you only care about the picks, you can click off now. You see them. But I'm gonna talk about last week because last week was an insane week. Um, and I'll I'm gonna go in depth on each game. But if you don't care about the picks, well, here they are. But I am gonna talk about all of them. Let's first talk about who lost last week and knocked themselves out of playoff contention. And the main game, the big game, everyone was excited for was Ohio State and Michigan. Everyone thought Ohio State, well, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to end up pulling away, and they, they're going to win it, and it's it, 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 they're going to win, and then they're going to win the Big Ten. Well, no, Michigan, Jim Harbaugh was on the record saying, we're going to beat Ohio State or die trying. And, well, they beat Ohio State. They went into the big house and pounded the run. Hassan Haskins was an animal. That game looked like Kenneth Walker against Michigan. Uh, man, was Hassan Haskins uh, dazzling in that game. Five rushing touchdowns. Uh, the defense made plays when they needed to, and Michigan got that big win. And now they're the favorites to win the Big Ten. They'll be going to the Big Ten title game against Iowa, who's there by virtue of Wisconsin losing. They got upset by Minnesota. So Michigan and Iowa will play. Uh, the next biggest game was Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. That was a tight game, back and forth. No one given an inch. Oklahoma State rallied for 13 unanswered in the fourth quarter. And that's ultimately what ended, give, ended up giving them the win. So now they vault into position where if they win the Big 12, good chance they get in. Uh, and lastly, the Alabama Crimson Tide surviving by the skin of their teeth against the Auburn Tigers, their hated rivals. And the first ever Iron Bowl to go to overtime. They couldn't score the entire game. I think in the first half they had negative rushing yards. Uh, but if there's a will, there's a way. Alabama continued to stop Auburn on defense in a 10 nothing game in the fourth quarter. Like, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. And they Alabama waited for forever and forever and forever. They missed a field goal. They they only settled for three when they had a first and goal. You're like, oh my god, are they ever gonna do it? They turn the ball over. You're like, that's it. Auburn Auburn's gonna win it. Well, Bama gets the ball back by some miracle. Auburn ran out of bounds, and Bryce Young marches them 95 yards downfield to tie the game. And then they would later go on to win it in overtime, in quadruple overtime. John Mechie catches the game-winning pass. Just when you think Alabama's left for dead, they hang around just enough to make you say otherwise. Now, both of the Heisman frontrunners, C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young, both had disappointing days, I would say. Now, here's the thing. Who had better stats? C.J. Stroud actually did not play that badly. 39 of 40, 30, 34 of 49, 394 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. Uh, for uh, for C.J. Stroud, but his team ended up losing. But Bryce Young, Bryce Young, on the other hand, did not have as good of a day. Went 25 of 51 for 
for 317 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. But he had that iconic last drive. I feel like that might be Bryce Young's Heisman moment is leading him down the field again. If I was a betting man, I'd bet on Bryce Young to win the Heisman. But obviously it's not a it's not an award. Um, also, Bryce Young will have another chance to impress against Georgia, although obviously by my score prediction, I don't think that'll happen. So there are three, four teams. There are four teams that are in a spot where if they win tomorrow, not tomorrow, on Saturday, there are four teams that are win and you're in. These four teams, all they got to do is win on Saturday and they're in the playoff. Those four teams are Georgia, Cincinnati, Alabama, and Michigan. Now, two of those teams play each other. So that's going to open the door up possibly for someone behind them. Here are team, there are two teams that need to win and they need someone ahead of them to lose. Those teams are Oklahoma State and Notre Dame. Those teams would need to win and have one of those teams ahead of them lose. There are six teams still with a chance to make the playoff. Those are Georgia, Michigan, Cincinnati, Alabama, Oklahoma State, and Notre Dame. The games on the right side of the board, the games on the right side have no playoff implications at all. No playoff implications. The games on the right... All right, games on the left. The games on the left will decide who makes the college football playoff. Let's go over the top ten. Georgia and Cincinnati stay at my number one and number two spots. Michigan vaults all the way up to three with their big win over Ohio State. They've looked impressive all year, and they finally got the big win. I feel good for Jim. I feel, I feel good for Jim Harbaugh. Glad he finally got his win over Ohio State. Oklahoma State slides up to four. I'm impressed with their resume. They have two wins over teams in the top ten, Baylor and Oklahoma, and they'll have a rematch against Baylor in this upcoming week's Big 12 championship game. So that should be a really good game. I dropped Alabama for some struggle wins. They haven't looked as impressive as of lately. Their best win is Ole Miss, but other than that, they've been struggling with some subpar teams. Obviously, if they beat Georgia, all their problems will be solved, but... The jury's still out on that. And at number six, I have Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame, they haven't impressed me as much as the other five. They don't have a. They have one win over a currently ranked team. That's Wisconsin, and that win doesn't look so great now that now that they ended up losing to Minnesota. And there are a ton. I mean, a ton of two loss teams. You can put seven through ten and twelve through fourteen. I mean, there's so many two loss teams. I got Baylor, Oregon, and Ohio State as the upper echelon of those teams. Um, they all have the best wins, whatever. And I put BYU at 10. You know, they beat Utah. Utah road-graded Oregon. Um, BYU's only really major losses were to Boise State and Baylor beat them. That's obviously why Baylor's ahead of them. But um, BYU, they looked really, they've looked really good. Um, they haven't lost a beat since they lost... Uh, well, since they lost Zach Wilson, so good for uh, good for BYU. Why not put him at ten? Um, strange, stranger things have happened. Hell, BYU has a more recent national championship than Georgia. But anyway, let's get into the picks. Let's start with the big one. Let's start with Alabama and Georgia. I I think Georgia's going to win and win big. Um, and here's why: Alabama needed quadruple overtime to beat Auburn on the road. Georgia beat them by 28. Alabama can bear, could, could only muster 10 points against Auburn in, the, in, in regulation. Georgia holds people to under 10 all the time. Georgia's defense just brutalizes people. They just brutalize people. It's, it's horrible what they do to these poor, poor offenses. I mean... Georgia's defense is no joke, man. They're one of the best college football has ever seen. They're a complete unit, top to down. Um, and 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 Bama's defense, I mean, they're decent. They're not, they're not the they're not horrible. They're not like Oklahoma where they're just allowed. But they did give up forty one to A and M. They have looked better in recent weeks. But I just think Georgia's going to win and win big. I I, I really think so. I, I just don't think Alabama has it this year. I think I think Georgia's going to put them in their place. I really don't think. Georgia's a favorite by six and a half. I'd take them to cover. 
All right, next we have Cincinnati and Houston. Now, for the American Conference, the higher seed or number one team in the conference hosts the championship game. So, Cincinnati will be hosting this game. Imagine what the environment is going to look like. No, no group of five team has ever made the playoff. So, imagine Cincinnati's one win away. They're, they're going to show out. Cincinnati's going to show out, and it's going to be a raucous environment, and it's going to be hard to compete there. But Houston does have a very good team. They lost first week to Texas Tech, but they've rattled off 11 straight, and most of which have been in convincing fashion. Houston definitely has a very good team, and I think they will pose a fight to Cincinnati, but ultimately, Cincinnati, this is their biggest game all year. I know people are going to say they're, that the Notre Dame win was bigger. And, yeah, sure, you could argue that. But this this is it. One more win, and they're in. And I think I think they're going to go out and get it done. Give me, give me the Bearcats. Oklahoma State and Baylor. These two teams played in the regular season at Stillwater. And Oklahoma State won, what was the score of that game? They won 24-14 to with some good defense. I expect some more of the same. I expect Oklahoma State to get out to a... Uh, a little bit of a lead early, and I expect their defense to shut it down from there. Baylor's got a decent offense, but they're not really setting the world on fire. I mean, the most amount of points, well, other than when they dropped 66 on Texas Southern and 45 on Kansas, the most they've dropped in a game is 31. So other than those cupcakes they've played, their offense I don't think can keep up, and I think Oklahoma's defense is just going to suffocate them. And I think Oklahoma State knows what they're playing for. And I think they're going to get it done. Michigan and Iowa. Now, Big Ten Championship game is in Indianapolis at Lucas Oil Stadium. I am going to be at this game. So no streams from any of the other games because I'm going to be on the road. But I'm going to be at this game between Michigan and Iowa. Should be an exciting game. I, I, I knew I was going to go this week. Uh, my uncle was able to secure tickets. He found some, some pretty good tickets. He's like, you want to go? I said, hell yeah, I want to go. So... I was watching the games. So I was like, I really don't want to see Ohio State beat somebody down in the Big Ten Championship. I'm like, please, anyone but Ohio State make it. And Michigan made it. And I'm glad Iowa made it because you know what? Iowa started off really hot. They beat Indiana, Iowa State, and Penn State and Maryland all when they were ranked. And everyone thought that these teams were super great. And, oh, my God, Iowa's blowing them out. They're ranked number two in the country. Um, and then it turns out those teams weren't that great. And then Iowa suffered the losses to Purdue and Wisconsin in pretty embarrassing fashion. But they've rallied back with four straight wins, and they're looking better now. And I'm glad that they rebounded. I'm glad Iowa wasn't just, a, oh, well, they, they didn't deserve to be ranked number two. They they, they terrible. I'm glad they kind of found themselves again. What Iowa's going to need to do to beat Michigan is they're going to need to force some turnovers. They're going to need to force some turnovers. And they're going to have to play sound offensively. I think they can do it. I think Iowa definitely can pull this off. What's the spread? Ten and a half for Michigan. I'd consider taking Iowa to cover. But I think Michigan will end up winning. I think their ground game is just too strong. Spencer Petras is going to have to have the game of his life. And I, I just don't think he'll be able to keep up with Michigan's offense. So I'm going to take I'm going to take Michigan. Oregon and Utah. Now, I know these teams played earlier in the year in Utah and embarrassed Oregon. The game wasn't even close. I mean... They just got absolutely brutalized for, for 60 minutes. I think Oregon's going to win. It's hard to beat a good team twice. Oregon is a good team. Um, I, I just don't see Utah beating Oregon twice. I, I just don't think Utah's going to have it in them. Maybe they will. This game doesn't really matter except for Pac-12 fans. So I'm going to take I'm gonna take Oregon. Wake and Pitt. Now, you usually it's Clemson. And whoever else wants to show up. Well, Clemson didn't want to show up, so Wake Forest and Pitt have both rallied through their conferences. Both teams are 10-2. And, and think about it, Pitt got upset by Western Michigan and Miami. They could be undefeated right now if it wasn't for that. And Wake Forest also had a really good team. They, they got rid of Kenneth Walker. Imagine, imagine how good they'd be. I, Pitt is favored by three. I like Sam Hartman and Wake Forest. Take the over in this game. High-powered offenses, they're going to score a ton of points. A ton of points will be scored in this game. So I'm going to take Wake Forest. Now for the smaller conferences, I'll take Northern Illinois over Kent State. I don't know anything about the MAC. I feel like every team in that conference is 6-6. Six and six. I'm going to take Northern Illinois. I had family that went to Northern Illinois. 
I'm going to take San Diego State over Utah State. Um, yeah, so I bet against San Diego State a lot this year. Not doing it again. They're a great team. Take a San Diego State. UTSA and Western Kentucky. Not, not only did UTSA lose and lose their undefeated season, they didn't just lose. They got, they got drugged. They got completely drugged. For, for for 60 minutes, it was a massacre against North Texas. I think they're going to rally the troops, though, against Western Kentucky. Two teams, these are two teams that have great, terrific offenses and no defenses. Bailey Zappi, very great quarterback for Western Kentucky, but I'm going to take UTSA and the Roadrunners at home. And last year, the Raging Cajuns against App State in the Sun Belt Championship. This should be an exciting match. Um, I'm going to take the Cajuns at home with Levi Lewis. They've also won 11 straight games since losing to Texas first week of the season. So I'm going to take Louisiana Lafayette. Should be a great game, though. Exciting atmosphere down there in the Bayou. Best team in Louisiana. Right? Does that make you mad at OSU fans? Um, yeah. Anyway, I am going to sign off now. Thank you guys for bearing with me as I make another video. I know some of you saw the muted video earlier, and some of you may have saw the pics, but... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.